Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And we also open up old school magic. And I've got posts from San Francisco. And before I'm going to open this, I need to tell you the story behind this envelope because this envelope is coming from a gentleman named Kyle. And Kyle saw me posting pictures of my mission trying to collect revised times four. So I just get full play sets of, well, not every card. I'm not going to go for the uh, restricted cards. For example, I'm not going to collect four Rule of Fortunes. I mean, it costs a fortune. <laughs> uh, I'm so incredibly funny. Uh, but also, you're not going to play with four in the deck. You're not even allowed to play with four in the deck. So, you know, I'm not going to do that. But a humble cart like Crumble or a cart like Desert Twister, yeah, I'm, I'm sure I can collect those cards four times. So I was posting pictures on my Insta whenever I complete a playset and uh, Kyle sent me a message through Insta and he said, hey, Timmy, um, I have some, some old revised cards that I would love to send to you. Uh, can you let me know what cards you're still looking for? And, and the first thing I did was like, you know, thank you very much, but realize you are in the States and I am here in Europe. So, you know, that's costly and a lot of effort to actually send it. And to my surprise, he was like, no, you know, I want to send it. It's all good. So, um, and, and he sent me a bunch of revised cards and that's probably what I'm going to find in this envelope. So Kyle, first of all, thank you very much for doing this. I really appreciate it. And they're going to go into my collection, of course. Um, yeah, I'm just going to open this and, and have a look. So here we're going to go. Ooh, opens up really well. And a nice solid break. Here we go. Let's see. Probably need some scissors here. I have those. Let's try to... It's a little bit dark today, very cloudy, so I'm sorry about the lighting, if it's not ideal. Let's just be careful, I don't want to, of course, damage the cards. They came all the way from San Francisco. Let's see. Okay, okay, here we go. Now we're getting somewhere, getting the scissors. This is some serious protection here. I like it. Oh, and of course, we're opening with the, with the most important card of all. Timmy, the Protocol Sorcerer. Of course, I already had four of these, but I'm collecting them. So thank you very much, Kyle. I really appreciate it. And I'm going to open the rest here. There we go. So a beautiful deck. The condition is beautiful of this card, by the way. Beautiful Protocol Sorcerer. Excellent to near mint. And we got the next one. The pirate ship. I like it. The thing is with this thing, it's a rare, it's five to cast. It's a four, three. I mean, you can tap it, it can ping just like the Timmy. I wish that, that the pirate ship could deal two damage instead of one damage. I mean, it is a whole ship. Doesn't that sound reasonable? Let me know in the comments below what little upgrade you think pirate ship needs to make it somewhat playable for example do you think it should be at least a four 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 five or do you think like me that it should be tapped for two damage instead of one damage um and it remember it also has island home i i'm i play with pirate ship and my opponent casts a tsunami and my pirate ship it sank it was gone like <laughs> it was just i lost all my islands i only had a tolaria left and also I lost my pirate ship and I was reminded again of, oh yeah, this card just has too many drawbacks for being a rare that's cost five mana. But hey, I still love it. The art is great. The flavor is great. The feel is great. So I'm still going to play it. I don't care. So next up, it's a red card and it's another great card. Kelden Warlord or Kelden. There's no J there. Kelden Warlord. Two red and two to cast. Summon Lord. And the stars below are the number of non-wall creatures on your side, including Warlord. Thus, if you have two other non-wall creatures, Warlord is 3-3. Three, three. If one of those creatures is killed during the turn, Warlord immediately becomes a 2-2. Two, two. Okay. Really cool art. Who's the artist again of this one? 
Kef Brock Schmidt. Okay, don't know a lot of pieces done by him. Next one, it's a blue card. It's a 5-5. Five, 5-5. Five. Uh, five, five. Oh, it's got to be, there's only one 5-5. Five, five. Yes, it's the Sea Serpent. Six to cast for a 5-5, five, five, and Serpent cannot attack unless opponent has islands in play. Serpent is buried immediately if at any time a controller has no islands. Beautiful card. Obviously, it doesn't see a lot of play. It would be so nice if, and I do this a lot with cards that are just not played, even even in 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 like tier three and and, and lower tier decks, they're still not being played. I think this card could have a chance of seeing the daylight in some decks if they would have given it Island Walk. So instead of Island Home, give it Island Walk. That would have been a lot better. Uh, let's take a look. Another red. Oh, or am I going too fast? I'm going too fast. A Quaint Hoover card, an artifact it seems. Any creature of power greater than two may not be untapped as normal. Oh, this is great art. It is the Meek Stone. Wow. And in beautiful, pristine condition. I think this is number four. Amazing. Really, look look at the art. Let's just take a moment to enjoy the art. This card is quite nice, especially when you have, for, for example, an Icy Manipulator next to it. Any creature with power greater than two may not be untapped as normal during the untapped phase. And why do I say with an Icy Manipulator so that you can tap down the Sarah Angel? Because that... The Sarah is one of the biggest problems to deal with if you if you rely on a Meek Stone strategy. And then we have the red card. And all planes in play are destroyed. Oh, I know which one this is. The Flash Fires. Let me just get the other one. Flash Fires. Beautiful. All planes in play are destroyed. I remember when I built a particularly nasty deck and I was playing at a tournament and I had a city in a bottle in play and it took away all his city of brasses and then I played a flesh fires and all his lands were gone and he, he was playing with an Urn and Geddon deck so he actually wanted to get rid of my lands but I did exactly the opposite. That was that was a sweet game of magic. So flash fires here. Beautiful condition again. These cards are really in top condition. And another one, so second flash fires. That's great. I think that actually completes my playset. Wow! So that is uh, that is fantastic. So thank you, Kyle, for that. That is great. Um, another artifact. This one, this time by Mark Tedden. He made Chaos Orb, but Chaos Orb is not in revised. Oh, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is a whole cycle. We've got a wooden sphere, one to cast. It does have an orb, actually. If you want to make an altar of Chaos Orb, I guess wooden sphere would be a pretty good candidate, although it has a lower casting cost. Let's see what it does again. One, any green spell cast gives you one life. Can only give one life each time a green spell is cast. Okay, but you don't have to tap it, so you can use it. When somebody else casts a green spell or when you cast another green spell. Nice. Next one up. Oh. Uh, oh, another red spell. So this is the Iron Star. Nice. These cards hardly see any play. I guess I guess you could play them in um, in some old school commander games. Card by Dan Frazier. It would be nice to try to do something with these cards. See if there's any more use like in 1v1 magic. And another art by Dan Frazier. So this could be another Iron Star. Yes, it's another Iron Star. Wow, wow, wow. So in total, I got, just to wrap it up here, I've got two, four, six, eight, ten new cards. Look at those for my revised collection. Most of them are in excellent condition, excellent up to near mint condition. I also really appreciate the Timmy. Thank you for sending that to me. And just in general, Kyle, thank you just, yeah, for doing this. Uh, it really helps. I'm going to add them um, to my collection. And uh, you know what? I'll, I'll add some pictures where you can see me putting them uh, in my binder. Thank you very much for doing this. 
Um, and for you watching this video, thank you for watching another Mill Day episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you want to support the channel, um, you can do so by uh, liking this video, leaving a comment, watching this. So thank you for doing that, sharing it on your socials. All that helps. If you're not a subscriber yet, please subscribe and help making the channel bigger and more known on YouTube. And you can also support the channel financially. And you can do that by becoming a member on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the channel. There's probably a link popping up right now. Click on the link and that will take you straight to Timmy's Patreon page. Talking about that, let's go to the end scroll and let's take a look at the fantastic, amazing, talented patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. Ik het als fik het als somba kazee.